Growth metrics are critical to how VCs value and monitor startups in the tech space. The DeFi landscape is different, and the metrics that we use are too. However, on-chain transparency makes it easier than ever to gain alpha through better understanding and assessment of these metrics. My name is James Buccini, and in this video I'm going to go through five of the most important growth metrics for DeFi protocols, and I'm going to show you how I wrote a quick script to do an on-chain analysis of any smart contract. The first metric that I'm going to talk about is total value locked, which often gets abbreviated down to TVL. This is how some of the big sites like DeFi Llama rank in different DeFi protocols, it becomes very important. TVL is calculated by the value of funds locked within a smart contract or a set of smart contracts which make a DeFi protocol. For example, with a decentralized exchange like Uniswap, you have liquidity pools, which investors can kind of place two asset pairs into that liquidity pool, and then traders can trade into them. It's the value of that liquidity pool which makes up the TVL, or all the liquidity pools which are controlled by Uniswap. So it's actually not a protocol-owned funds. Uniswap doesn't have right stem funds. Those are still users' funds. It's the liquidity providers' funds which are making up the TVL. But the smart contracts themselves have attracted that TVL through the distribution of in this case, trading fees, but often it's also governance token, and TVL can be quite highly manipulated by a, a distribution of governance tokens, which might not be maintainable for the long term. When we're assessing the TVL of a project, we also need to take into consideration what they're doing to attract that liquidity, what they're doing to bootstrap the early liquidity, and how sustainable that is going forwards. Will the TVL drop off if the governance token distribution drops off, for example? The next metric we're going to talk about is active wallet addresses. This is the number of unique wallets which have interacted with a DeFi protocol over a period of time. We can often track this on a chart to see if there's more wallet addresses that have interacted with it this month than the previous month. And that can kind of give us an idea of if the protocol is growing or it's kind of reaching a peak and it's kind of a saturated market as such. This is where the beauty of on-chain analysis comes in as well, because, because everything's transparent on the blockchain. You can see how many new wallets are interacting with the protocol, how many wallets that have previously interacted with it are coming back and interacting with it again. And all that data is completely transparent and it's available to anyone who can code up a quick script or go in any scan and kind of separate that data and analyze it and look for patterns. Transaction volume can be defined in a couple of different ways. I've seen it referred to as the quantity of transactions going through a DeFi protocol, but more often I've seen it used to describe the value of those funds, so the amount traded into a decentralized exchange, for example. Again, this is something that can be quite widely manipulated. I've seen some kind of decentralized futures protocols have extremely high trading volumes, and it's completely unrealistic, and it's just because there's incentivized trading and wash trading on them platforms. People are basically trading against themselves or just flipping back and forth. And even if the strategy that they're using isn't profitable, they can still make money through the incentives that they're gaining for creating that trading volume. The protocol wants to look like they've got high volumes so that it attracts more people and it becomes more of a, a big deal in the industry. And to do that, they're incentivizing it, they're basically paying people with a governance token or some via some other method to incentivize that volume that's on, being traded on the exchange. With a little bit of due diligence though, we can quite easily weed out the protocols that are doing this. And over a longer period of time, it's a very valuable metric to see how a DeFi protocol is growing over time. The next metric, which I think is very valuable for both DeFi protocols and wider blockchain ecosystems, is the fee revenues generated. We can look at this in different ways. For something like a DeFi borrowing and lending platform, it will be the fees based on the transaction volume. So most DeFi protocols will charge a fee for their services. And it's those fees which really kind of show the added value for that protocol. If someone's willing to pay a fee for something, then it means that they're getting value in return for that. They must be get, doing something right to generate that fee revenue. For wider blockchain ecosystems like alternate layer one and layer two blockchains, we can use the transaction fees or the gas fees that users are paying to see how much real usage there is on that blockchain system. So something like Ethereum has very high fees and a high transaction volume, and that's also obviously leading the way in the smart contracts platform. Other platforms and alternate layer one blockchains, we can go down, and the lower the fees, the more transaction volume it has to kind of needs to really show how much potential value that blockchain is accruing. For me, it's a really strong indicator that I can use to see how a DeFi ecosystem is growing and maturing in the space. 
The final metric that we're going to talk about, and this is one that's really hard to manipulate, is token appreciation. So the price of the governance token for that DeFi protocol. We can generally see how much kind of market confidence there is in a DeFi protocol and how much future potential the market is pricing into that protocol by the appreciation of its token price. And we can look at this in US dollar terms. But what's more valuable is to look at it in the price to Ethereum and the market cap in Ethereum. So the market cap is calculated by the number of tokens available multiplied by the price of the token. But rather than use US dollars, because that will kind of give us an indicator of how the whole the wider crypto market is doing, then we can look at the price relative to Ethereum. So Ethereum will move up and down. And to a certain extent, when Ethereum goes down, altcoins like drop further, but it will still give us a better indicator of how a token is maybe bleeding off in price relative to Ethereum or whether it's really acting strong and it might provide a better risk to reward as an investment relative to staked Ethereum, for example. Okay, now let's jump into some on-chain analytics. So the script I've written here is open source on GitHub, and we're gonna run this off for the Uniswap v3 router address on the Ethereum mainnet. So it should be loads of transactions. We're looking at the 24 hour history to see if them transactions are going up and down in volume. Well, that's pulling in data. Let's have a quick look at the code. And this is the interesting section, and we're using the ethers library here. We're actually using a provider subset library, which is actually connecting to the ether scan API and that's pulling in the data here. So we're using the provider.get history for this address from block and to block. And we're using the current block and we've just got a little uh, for loop which is looping for a 24 hour period. And then we're calculating that time period based on 15 second blocks times. So each time that we do this, we're getting the history. And then going through that history object, which is a collection of all the transactions which, which have interacted with that smart contract in that, for that time period and we're doing a transaction count. We're collecting the value of each transaction, that's an ether price. Note that if you're using like ERC20 tokens, then it won't actually count that value, so that's something to be aware of. And then we're also looking at the wallet count, the unique wallet counts for that one hour period. Finally, we print out all this data into some nice little uh, console-based tables, which I'm sure you won't like, but for me, they'll think they're wonderful. And then we output the 24-hour transaction volume, the value, and the unique wallets. So what this could be used for, probably more useful use case, would be putting this directly into maybe a automated systems trading platform, putting this raw data in and using it to do momentum trading or to add some kind of additional ability rather than just price action to kind of look at a smart contract, particularly in the early stages of a DeFi protocol to see kind of if it's gaining momentum, there's more people interacting with it, it's building up TVL and things like that. Let's see if we finish pulling off the data now. So there we go, we've got the hourly unique wallet addresses, the hourly transaction value, the hourly transaction count, and then we've got all the totals at the end. Obviously this is Uniswap v3, so it's quite a mature protocol, so there's not much we can kind of gain from this, but if we're looking at an individual liquidity pool or a brand new DeFi protocol, then we can kind of gauge how much traction that protocol, that token is getting um, via this kind of on-chain analysis, and it can be quite useful. As mentioned, the script is open source in my GitHub repository. Note that this was something that I knocked up in a couple of hours. It's not a finished product that's kind of production ready to be used for financial insights. It should be used as a starting point to kind of start your journey into on-chain analysis. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing for updates. And if you found it useful, don't forget to hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for watching.